start. Continue. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our final 2021 Disruptive Leadership Webinar. My name is Brianna and I am the Assistant Director at the Leadership Institute and I will be today's moderator. Um, we hope to make this webinar as interactive as possible and create a sense of community. So we will be using the Q&A feature for um, all questions and I will make sure I pause the speaker throughout if we have any appear. Today's webinar will be facilitated by Chelsea Powell. Chelsea has, has provided leadership development and executive coaching in the Columbus community for the past five years. She is a national certified counselor, mindset qualified and foresight, and holds several other self-assessment tools, um, including MBTI. Chelsea has worked with both D1 and D2 athletes to enhance their mental performance both on and off the court. Chelsea was a stalwart student athlete at Southeastern Louisiana University, playing basketball as well as carving out a name for herself as she still holds multiple three-point shot records. Through Chelsea's experience, her focus is on enhancing customer service within the gym to meet the needs of their members. Um, and with that, I will welcome Chelsea um, and I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Bree, and thanks for having me today to talk about, I don't know, I think everything that relates to us and makes us human, um, that we're not perfect, right? Uh, I know I'm clearly not. You'll probably see throughout this presentation that I'm not perfect, but that's the point of this. You know, this is flaws and all, and really the the vision for this webinar even this topic to talk about is just for us to be able to take a minute and take away expectations that we have for ourselves maybe that others have for us but also what those expectations we have for other people so you know when i say that expectations i certainly have expectations of my husband right and and i certainly have expectations of my employees that work for us at the gym but Sometimes we need to reevaluate what those expectations are, but also how we're communicating those expectations. You know, we've always heard the phrase, you know, give yourself grace. I think that was one of the probably the number one quote or phrase that we all heard during, you know, the beginning of COVID. It's like, let's give ourselves some grace. We're not perfect. We're learning. And I don't understand why that became so popular right as COVID. I do understand, but I wish it was more popular prior to COVID because we were still imperfect before COVID happened and we're still going to continue to be imperfect as we continue in our journeys. And the quicker that we can accept our flaws and embrace our imperfections and embrace those imperfections within ourselves. Uh, but embrace those imperfections with our coworkers, with our employees, team members, um, colleagues, right? Um, we can we can start encouraging people around us, those around us, to be more vul vulnerable, and them too to start embracing these perfect imperfections. And if we do that, we can start to obtain a, a level of self awareness that will ultimately allow us to build better teams, will allow us to be a better leader, uh, probably more relatable leader as well, and ultimately learn to build a team around you that brings something to the table that you lack, right? That is the biggest part of understanding what maybe you're not good at or what a flaw is of that you have is understanding that, recognizing that, and realizing who you need to invite to the table, who you need to call in, because they maybe have that strength where you don't, right? Um, so I wanted to start with this question. What is your biggest weakness? I think we've always been in an interview, or at least have probably had this question at some point during an interview. Um, and if you haven't, it you might soon, right? What is your biggest weakness? And a lot of times when you're sitting in an interview, you're like, crap, what am I supposed to say to this question? I, what can I say without 
sounding like I'm not going to do a good job, right? Um, it, usually we give off an answer that might sound a little bit like this. Um, say, okay, well, Chelsea, what's your biggest weakness? Well, Brie, my biggest weakness is I'm a perfectionist. So sometimes I'll work so hard on a project that I'll get obsessed with it and I won't stop until it's perfect. Okay, <laughs> right? Like we feel like we have to have that answer, like because it's really not that much of a weakness, right? So you're telling me you're gonna be perfect and you're gonna work so hard until it is perfect, right? Um, if someone tells me that in an interview, my response in my head is cool, 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 cool. So you're BSing me. Awesome, right? Um, but we feel this pressure and this expectation and and really fear to acknowledge in front of people we don't know that maybe we do have a weakness. So for instance, why can't our answer be something like this? Like, I love this question. It took a lot of self-awareness for me to realize that this is a weakness of mine, but it's being detailed oriented, right? I found that I really need to set time on my schedule to ensure I'm not missing the details. And after I do that, I ask someone on my team whose strength is details and I get their feedback, right? Okay, so yes, I answered the question. I'm not detailed oriented, but what I did is, yes, I acknowledged the weakness, but I let them understand that I have that self-awareness, that I understand this isn't one of my strengths. And what else did I give them? I gave them a solution, right? This is a weakness of mine, but here's how I adapt. Here's how I utilize those around me is I ask for feedback, right? I think, you know, again, we, we live in this world where we have this expectation that we feel like we have to be perfect and we have to present ourselves just as that. And then when we do that, we get into, let's say we got that job and we get into that job and, and we're trying to live up to that expectation, right? And we do that <laughs> because we live in a world now where it's like Instagram, Facebook versus reality, right? So here's a picture here, right? Beautiful daughter, right? This is my little girl, Macklin. Um, this is Instagram. This is on my Instagram. Um, you know, we, we live in a world where of comparison and trying to fit in and only posting what you feel good about, like what, you know, per picture perfect. Look at this picture, right? I paid good money for this picture. I paid good money for the outfits. I paid good money for the hair. Look at that beautiful braid um, that T's Hair Salon did for me, right? Uh, I paid for the makeup. I paid for those outfits. I paid for the photographer to come capture the perfect light to get the perfect background and also to then take those pictures she took of us and edit them to make us look and feel perfect, all right? Expectation versus reality, right? And again, because we are living in a world where we feel like we have to only post things and be this picture perfect, I don't look like this all the time, right? But there is that pressure right? This is reality, right? This is me. This is my daughter again. And then this is my son. This is, this is reality, right? This is picture perfect, or it should be, right? I should feel just as comfortable letting everyone see the flaws that I have and, and not good lighting, no makeup, and a home that's probably really messy, but it, it's real, it's raw. I took this picture a couple of days ago. Of course, you can see the tree in the background. Um, it was spur of the moment, you know? It was, I don't have a lot of pictures of both of my kids together. This is real. And when I decided I wanted to use this, it's because again, we even as leaders try to live up to this expectation that we have to be perfect all the time, especially if we're leading others, especially you know, if we are in a position of power or authority, we feel this pressure that we can't make mistakes and that we have to have that picture perfect. But I want y'all to start thinking about leadership like this. 
when it comes to leadership, imperfection is more important than perfection, right? So I'm going to say that again. When it comes to leadership, imperfection is more important than perfection. Why? Right? There, there, there's the million dollar question. Why? Because at the end of the day, wh- who are you leading? Right? Are you leading perfect people? Probably not. If you are, you need to call me and let me know where you work, right? You're probably not leading perfect people. You'll never lead perfect people because perfect people don't exist. So why should I, as a leader, pretend or feel an expectation that I have to be perfect? If I'm perfect, probably those that are working for me or with me, around me, aren't going to be able to relate to me because I am giving off the expectation that I don't make mistakes. And that's not the world that we live in today and or ever, right? So why admit imperfection, right? So, you know, kind of the, the flaws, the rough edges, the broken rules, um, you know, that that is what makes our work different, unique, effective even. The imperfections are what attracts others to our creations and make them stand out, right? And with every mistake and imperfection, there's an opportunity to learn and grow. But at first, you have to acknowledge that that flaw or imperfection or weakness mistake is there, right? Now, the tides are changing and and the portrait of a leader is too. Leading in this time of where we are today demands new capabilities um, and new skill sets because much of this is we're leading in a time of ambiguity. We're living in a t- we're we're leading, excuse me, and living in a time where we don't know what tomorrow is going to do, right? Or look like. I mean, for instance, my husband and I were going to Ireland this weekend. We decided to postpone it because we aren't sure if we would get stuck there with everything that's going on and having two young kids. Like, so we're we're leading in a time where we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Right. We don't we don't know. So it's. It, it, we're, we're, it's kind of like we're waiting just to see, you know, what everything is going to happen and how everything's going to unfold. And I can try to lead and act like everything is good, perfect. I have everything together or I can start admitting that I don't know it all. Right. That I have these imperfections and that I need other people to help. Right. Um, you know, I think Chelsea, you I'm sorry to interrupt, but I think you brought up something really telling um, as far as attracting others, you know, when you're leading with your imperfections. Um, I, I can think of a, a colleague of ours that, you know, she 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 enters the room, you know, kind of with her mess and with the reality of who she is and people gravitate towards that. People, um, you know, when we go out to different conferences and attend different different events, she's being authentic. She's not code switching. She's not, you know, trying to put on this persona. Um, So I I think that, you know, you know, like I said, that was very telling that you said imperfection kind of attracts people to you because, you know, you you look real. I mean, you know, other people may look like you're, you know, you're the hot mess express coming, coming through the door, but that's what makes you appealing to others because you're not trying to put on a front. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it is more relatable, right? I mean, the people that you naturally gravitate towards are, like you said, Brie, those who kind of feel comfortable in your, in their skin, right? Comfortable and vulnerable. Like it's, it's so vulnerable admitting a flaw or an imperfection. And what's really important too, if you're going to be an imperfect leader, you have to really make sure you're creating a culture where it's safe, to admit those imperfections. Because if you're not creating that space as a leader for your employees to have that safety, that sense of belonging, and that sense of acceptance, then they they probably will co- you know, code switch. Um, they probably will uh, have a different persona or you know, never get to that point of admitting imperfection. That's why as a leader, it is so important that you embrace 
being an imperfect leader and that you are very open about it, right? And because, you know, perfection's never as interesting um, as imperfection, right? You know, um, our best work isn't perfect. Um, it's, like I said, it's the imperfections in our work that allow us to be great. Um, and again, you know, we say it's a cliche to say nobody's perfect, but the reason why it's a cliche is because it's true, right? Um, the other thing is perfection and being perfect is limiting. If I'm telling someone I'm perfect, then what I'm actually admitting is that there's no room for me to grow. Think about that. If I'm not admitting my imperfections or I'm not admitting my flaws and I'm saying, oh, I got this. You know, I'm good. I don't need any help. You're you're telling people there's no room for you to grow, right? Some of the worst um, leaders or I guess individuals I, I have experience working with are those that come to me in a leadership development class and they say, I'm good. I know it all. Because my response is, are, are you sure? Because even I don't and I'm facilitating this, right? Um, so perfect is limiting. Perfect is also an excuse, right, to stay at the status quo, to not challenge, to not do anything new, to not try to improve anything. Um, and then also perfection doesn't exist, right? You're just chasing a ghost. So just kind of think about what is the perfect version of this webinar, right? What is the perfect version of this presentation? Well, for some, per for some people, you probably would like this to be in person. OK, some people you probably wish I had stopped 10 minutes ago. <laughs> For some people, you probably would like it to be longer, right? Or 10 times longer or more in depth or maybe even a different facilitator. It's fine. I don't take offense to that. I know I'm imperfect, right? Um, you know, th there's no perfect version of this presentation. Um, just like there's no perfect version of anything that we do. But I'm OK presenting this today. I know that there might be a comma out of place or might have missed a period or I, I know there are flaws within this presentation. But I'm OK putting it out there. I'm OK being vulnerable enough to one, talk about imperfection, but also like accept that this isn't a perfect presentation. None of my presentations are, even if you think on the outside looking in, they're perfect. I'm going to tell you right now, and Bree knows this, they're not. I'm not good with time management. <laughs> I have to cut things. I have to speed things up. And it's a con it's a living, breathing um, organism, like presentation. It constantly changes. It shifts, right? There's that beauty of imperfection. Um, I'm fine with this. I published it. Hopefully, you know, it will provide value to someone who listens to this or anyone who's joining us today. And what I will do is those imperfections that live within this presentation, I'll work to fix and work on and, and, and improve for the next one, right? So again, if I'm not admitting that I'm um, imperfect, there's no room for me to grow. There's the beauty that lies with imperfection, right? Any other, any questions, Bree, or anything? Not at this time, Chelsea. Awesome. So I want you just to take a minute and I want you to think about your imperfect history. Woo! Asking you to dive like real, real deep, right? So think back on all the risks that you've taken the mistakes that you've made during the course of your career, right? And maybe if you're like me, there's probably a lot. Um, maybe think about one or two. Um, so think back on those risks you've taken and just kind of jot them down next to you. Um, the mistakes you've made during the course of your career. Um, so I'll give you just a minute to do that. And you don't have to think back like 20 years ago, but I'm sure there's probably a recent mistake or risk that you've taken that you can kind of reflect on as well. And once you do that, 
what are you, which ones are you most proud of? And as you keep um, thinking, and maybe if you'd like to share, you can write them in the chat um, uh, if you're open to that. But I'll give you an example for a recent one. Um, you know, Bree mentioned that I am a gym owner now, and that was a very recent risk that my husband and I made, took, um, beginning of August. And we got approached with an opportunity to take over ownership of a gym. It was the scariest time of my life. I am still living in that time. <laughs> Um, because it's just December. But when I look back on that decision, I am proud of that decision because, and this is what I told my husband, and this is kind of what led us to make that decision. At what point are you going to start investing in yourself in kind of taking that risk on yourself? And as scary as it is, or was, still is, um, for both my husband and I, I am most proud of it because we kind of, we bet on ourselves, right? We, we bet on ourselves that hopefully we could, <laughs> we could make it, it, continue to have a successful business and, and, and continue to grow it, right? That's a huge risk, but I'm so proud. Now, Ask me in a year and I might tell you something different, right? Um, but I'm just curious, Bree, is there anything in the chat? Or Bree, do you have something that you'd like to share? And that was a hard question for me, Chelsea. And, you know, talking about imperfection, I, I'm just going to be honest. It, it made me, when I thought about risk, uh, of course I can think of a, a lot of mistakes, but as far as taking risk on myself and, and kind of betting on myself, what you were, you know, trying to explain to Matt, I think that's something that, you know, I shy away from. And, you know, you what I'm learning today is sometimes you have to kind of, you know, pull pull the trigger on some of these things um, and, and and just go for it. Um, and, and part of the learning is taking that risk. And I, hey, I, I don't think you and Matt are crazy. I, I love that you all, <laughs> I love that you all just went for it. And it, it, it truly is an inspiration because like you said, if, if you all didn't, you know, Chelsea, what, what, what would you be do doing right now? Kind of living in the status quo. So I, I I love, you know, everything about that story. And I just wanted to let you know, you know, kind of putting my imperfections out there. I, it's hard for me to think about risks that I've taken in my career. Yeah, it, and because it's such a vulnerable place to be. And I think if I know I'm not a perfect business owner. I know I'm not a perfect boss of, I think we have 20 total coaches and staff. But I know this, I'm relatable, right? And I am the first. Um, I think my manager, he uh, wrote in the group chat of all of our staff um, getting on to one of us because uh, we did something wrong. And guess who did it wrong? Me, right? So I took that opportunity. I said, oh, Todd, I'm really sorry. That's my bad, right? And so in front of the whole group, like I took accountability for that. I let everyone know um, that, hey, I'm not perfect either, but I'm willing to admit that. And if I'm willing to say I'm imperfect, I will tell you this, it makes those decisions a, just a little less scary, <laughs> knowing that I'm not going to be perfect at this. There's going to have, there's going to be mistakes, but I'm going to do everything I can to work to improve and, and to be the best leader that I can be, right? And like I said, I think it does take a little bit less, like some of the fear out of that is just accepting that it's going to be imperfect, but beautifully imperfect, right? Um, thank you for sharing that, Brie. I really appreciate it. All right, so imperfect leaders. Again, like here are some characteristics. If I haven't like led you to the water and, and making you drink yet, but like we're almost there. So, you know, imperfect leaders, you understand what drives your behaviors 
and actions, right? You have that clarity. You have that self-awareness. You understand, right? You're kind of having that acceptance of I'm not perfect, but here's what I'm going to do to try to improve. And guess what? It's still not going to be perfect. But I'll tell you this. One of my personal trainers came up to me and she said, I would love to try this. My response was, and I might have given this example in the previous webinar. I told her, I said, how, let me know how I can help. We're going to do it. If it doesn't work, we're going to try it again, right? She's like, what if no one signs up? What if nothing, this goes this way? And I said, it's great. I'm here to support you. We'll fix it as we go, right? Allow yourself to be vulnerable. Imperfect leaders, this is vulnerability. Of course, Brene Brown does such a great job talking about vulnerability. The Leadership Institute um, did a webinar on vulnerability earlier this year, too. I facilitated that one because I think vulnerability is such an amazing skill to have um, as a leader. Again, we're talking about, you know, if you're going to admit imperfections, if you're going to admit failures, that's vulnerable. And if you're willing to do that and you're vulnerable first as a leader, you're essentially telling the rest of your staff that it's okay for them to be vulnerable too. Um, but that's really tricky because if someone is and starts to be vulnerable with you, how you respond to that first vulnerability is going to set the tone for probably the rest of the time they're working with you. So if you understand and if you can see that someone's being vulnerable, being raw, admitting that imperfection, maybe even admitting where they made a mistake, right? How you respond will set the course and the direction of that culture that you have in your um, in your team. Reward them for that vulnerability. Acknowledge both your strengths and weaknesses. Again, um, I my weakness not good with details. Um, there's probably a lot of misspelled words in here, unless. Uh, <laughs> Unless it draws a red line under it, I'm not going to notice it. Um, in fact, I've been in a presentation where there was a word that was misspelled and someone did point it out to me and I thanked them for it. Yeah, it was embarrassing, but I promise you this, that word has never been misspelled again. <laughs> um, but also acknowledge your strengths. Um, you know, I think one of the strengths I have is I am relatable because I am going to be vulnerable first. Um, I will admit where I make those mistakes, those failures. Um, imperfect leaders find courage to rely on others to compensate for that missing skill, right? Again, with leading people, we feel like there's this expectation that we have to be perfect. But in reality, if you have that, if you are an imperfect leader and you're vulnerable and very upfront about that, there is that level of self-awareness that says, well, I'm not detailed oriented. I need someone on my team who is, and I need to ask them for help and ask for their feedback, right? There's that courage to rely on others. There's that trust to rely on others. Um, and then, you know, imperfect leaders fuel curiosity to move from executing to leading, right? So kind of that level of exploration. Um, where it's you know not going to be necessarily executed perfectly, but let's figure out how we can lead our teams, um, our coworkers, our colleagues in that time, right? With that vulnerability. Um, so I want to just re like really check in and um, just do a little quick like leader A or leader B, which we kind of talked about this, but. Kind of like who's more relatable? Leader A, successful, wise decisions, large accomplishments, deliberate, careful, but hardly admits any mistakes. Leader B is very successful, accomplished, very open about the public failures, candid admissions, and open about mistakes. Again, we're going to gravitate towards leader B. Right? Leader A, it's going to be hard to go to that leader and if they're not admitting that they make mistakes or that they're imperfect, are you really going to feel comfortable to go to them and tell them that you made a mistake on a major project? Probably not. You'll probably just um, fix it, 
try to fix it on your own, cause yourself more stress, maybe more anxiety around it, um, and hope that they never notice that that mistake was made, right? But when that starts happening, um, and people are starting to hide and try to fix mistakes, it, it's a very slippery slope, right? Um, if someone can't come to you and admit that they made a mistake or they did something wrong or, you know, did something imperfect um, and they continuously try to fix it themselves, there is a chance that that product, that project, whatever it is they're working on is not going to be ready to go or ready to launch, right? Um, and so there comes dishonesty. There comes in a lack of accountability, right? I'm more open to take accountability or more likely to um, if I know that I'm not going to be punished for that mistake, right? Um, instead, if some of an employee comes to me um, at the gym and says, hey, I input this gym member wrong, I say, okay, let's log in. Here, tell me what you did. Um, and I said, it's all right. I said, I, I've done this before. Um, here's how we fix it moving forward. Right. And so there's that teachable moment. Right. So, again, like who's more relatable to you um, or for you? Um, all right. So quickly just want to talk about, um, you know, kind of setting the stage and giving Chelsea, people. We did have a question come in. Sorry to interrupt you. I was trying to catch you when you were in the midst sure. of changing slides. Um, but, you know, in regards to your slide about uh, Instagram versus reality, which I, I really appreciate, by the way, um, how do you know the the proper boundaries for professionalism versus reality yeah um, i think mm -hmm. sorry sorry did i cut you off was there another part of that question no go ahead okay sorry yeah no that's an excellent question you know I think Brisa, you know, hot mess express, right? There is a fine line of boundaries and professionalism in that Instagram versus reality. And, you know, I'm not telling you to walk in and, you know, say, um, this is me. This is who I am. Um, I have all of this stuff going on. Um, you know, you not telling you to admit your whole life to people right but what i'm saying is i'm encouraging you to, is to have that vulnerability to allow for those mistakes and to ask for that feedback right um you know again it goes back to kind of those admitting your imperfections and admitting those mistakes, kind of that Instagram versus reality. Like Instagram, everything's perfect. Everything looks perfect. Everything, you know, seems perfect. But I'll promise you, I'm pretty sure that picture that I showed, um, the behind the scenes of that is not perfect, <laughs> right? The behind the scenes of that is my daughter was running crazy. I'm pretty sure my husband and I got in a little fight because he didn't like what I picked out for him to wear, right? But you don't see that. Um, so the fine line of what you share and what you don't share. Do you need help with something? Did you make a mistake where you should share that, right? Um, or with giving that help or feedback. That's kind of the fine line of professionalism, right? I'm not telling you to air your dirty laundry and in uh, imperfections, not an excuse either, right? So don't sit here and say, well, this is as good as it's gonna get because I'm just imperfect, right? But I'm saying admit those imperfections and ask for the help when you need it, right? Um, because there is certainly that level of professionalism and it can be as simple as going to, you know, someone you're working with and say, hey, Brie, I can't figure out how to do this and I did this and I, I messed it up. Can you help me figure it out? Right. And, and then that's it. That's a beautiful exchange of imperfection, admitting a mistake in that level of vulnerability right there. And how Brie responds in that moment, if she says, well, Chelsea, you suck. I'm just kidding. Um, or she's like, this is awful. This is terrible. I'm not going to go to Brie again. But if her response is, oh, no worries. 
let me help you figure it out. This happens all the time, or you know, let's work on this together, and then we fix the issue. I'm more likely to go to Bree. Um, so I hope that helps. Again, I'm not asking you to air your dirty laundry, but I'm asking you to be open and honest when you do make a mistake because it's really just taking away that image of perfection. Yes, and I think the most telling thing you said, imperfection is not an excuse. Yeah. Um, you know, we shouldn't use it, you know, <laughs> to to for as an excuse to to say, hey, this is as good as it's going to get and and take me as I am. Uh, yeah. I think that there's definitely that fine line and you explained that well, Chels. Right. Thank you. I'm sorry if I jim uh, like rambled on my words, um, but that's an excellent question. I think that's something even when terms of vulnerability, that's something that a lot of people, you know, kind of like, well, where's that boundary, right? Where's that fine line? And honestly, it's how safe, how comfortable you feel maybe with that person you're talking to. But also, I'm not asking you to share anything that you don't feel comfortable sharing, right? Like, not everyone knows all my imperfections, right? There's a time and place for it. Um, but, you know, I think this goes back to kind of setting that stage and as an imperfect leader, how you can create a culture, an environment where your team feels that freedom to express, right? That freedom to kind of give their feedback, their thoughts, their opinions, what they might have done right, what they might have done wrong, and, and get that collectively out in the open and how you move forward. And again, I've been saying how you respond to that as an imperfect leader is everything. So here are some things, just some quick things, what to remove. Unrealistic expectations, right? Um, of course, have some expectations if you're doing a project, right? Um, if you think about bridge builders, air traffic controllers, architects, like there are projects that need to be perfect, right? Um, those are certainly some instances where that task needs to be perfect. But let, let's be very clear here. It is the task that is expected to be perfect, not the person, right? And collectively, if you can remove um, unrealistic expectations, but again, you know, building a bridge is not just one person. Again, this is where I'm kind of saying, understand what your strength is, what your weakness is, and place those around you that have what you lack. That way you can approach projects, you can approach, um, you know, pro whatever it is that you're doing as a strong team because you all have a strength to bring to the table. Right. So remove un ex, um, unrealistic expectations, remove blockers. OK, blockers are can be negativity, judgment. My goodness, if someone admits something or says something and someone says that's never going to work, we've already tried that. Or why would you do that? I'm not going to share again. Right. I'm going to close off. Um, so remove that negativity and remove that judgment. And what you do in return is you reward that vulnerability. You say, thank you for sharing. Let's talk about that, right? Um, you reward the risk. You reward the failure, right? And so maybe it's not a question of where you say, why did you fail at this? You say, talk me through what happened. They tell you and you say, what what are you going to do differently next time, right? How do we fix this, right? So reward that failure. Um, reward someone when they're trying something new. And reward if someone comes to you and asks for help. That's it. Thank you for coming to me, Bree. I would love to help you with this, right? So what to remove versus what to reward. So really setting that stage and, and allowing people to be free to express. Because if you do that, Teams that embrace this imperfection have this culture, right, where they are going to have a higher productivity. Um, they're going to have a deeper trust. They're going to have clear communication, open vulnerability, and it's going to encourage and ask for feedback, right? If I sit here and I pretend that I'm perfect and my team's perfect, guess what? We're not going to have that deep trust. We're not going to have that open vulnerability. I mean, I was sitting with uh, Bree, Shana, and Dreesy, and Kathy yesterday, um, and we, you know, doing an activity, and it was so beautiful. I mean, we all felt so comfortable 
expressing opinions, expressing concerns. Um, it, and it was a really, really great experience because we all know we're not perfect, but we all accept that of each other, right? And we were encouraging and asking for feedback and working together, right? So it is in your benefit if you are an imperfect leader and encourage your team, your employees to have that level of vulnerability where they feel that they can, um, you know, admit their own imperfections. Um, the other thing that accepting imperfection does, um, it enables connection, right? Um, vulnerability is like magnets that really pull us together. Um, so if you give others a glimpse of your imperfections or, you know, kind of wear your heart on your sleeve or no, that's not the right phrase, but just you, you are who you are, right? You're just very comfortable in your own skin. Um, if you can expect that, if you can give that transparency to them, they're more likely going to give that transparency to you. Um, when I open up to Brie about my life, and I, mean, I won't speak for Brie, but I can only imagine that that and that allows her to feel more comfortable opening up about her life. And then look at that. We're drawn closer together, right? The next thing is accept imperfection enables action. Um, you know, again, it's this pursuit of we can do this better. This can improve. If we say this project is perfect, again, what we're saying is this project's not going to be anything else. It's not going to do anything else, but it's good as where it is. So there's that kind of status quo. And then accepting imperfection enables risk taking. Um, so again, like the next time someone screws up or makes a mistake, say, again, here's this for excuse me, here's this reward. Say thanks for trying. Pat them on the back or whatever, you know, and say, what will you do differently next time? Right? Because you want your employees to take a risk. Because if you don't take risk and you're not encouraging to make those changes, your company, your team your product, the culture, it's going to stay the same. And it needs to be a living, breathing organism, right? Um, so as we wrap up, just a couple of things. The imperfect leader, remember your imperfect history, right? It, it has made you who you are today. What, if, what you have learned from that imperfect history. Um, let go, right? So what task are you holding on to because you're convinced that others won't do them as well as you? Here's this level of delegation that it's so hard for people to give up, right? Um, because a lot of times when I ask someone, why aren't you giving up that task? They say, well, because they don't know how to do it. They won't do it as good as me. Well, yeah, because you haven't let them try. So you don't even know, right? Um, so let go of some things. So what are 